So uh, I would like to thank the organizers first and uh, also to apologize because uh, exactly one year ago, maybe at uh, up to one day or two, I gave a, a talk here in Padova uh, with exactly the same title. So, <laughs> yes, so maybe you after you. Can. But uh, fortunately, the subject is the same, but the, the contents of the talk is a little different. So, um, so this was a joint work, part with Hélène No and Zheng Dao Yu, and the second part f with uh, Zheng Dao Yu. So uh, let me start by, uh, before st uh, explaining what uh, an irregular Hodge filtration is, let me start by explaining some well-known facts about the Hodge filtration on a smooth quasi-projective variety as uh, defined by uh, De Ligne. Uh, so in this talk, Q will be always a smooth quasi-projective variety. Uh, it's uh, usually regarded as an open, Zariski open set in a smooth projective or quasi-projective variety X. So as you know, or as you may have heard, that De Ligne in the 70s defined uh, Hodge, canonical Hodge filtration on the cohomology of this uh, variety. And uh, this has a canonical mixed, this gives uh, this variety a canonical mixed Hodge structure. So to make this filtration explicit, uh, it is better to embed U as an open set in a, in a projective variety X, smooth, so that the complement is a normal crossing divisor. And then uh, you consider instead of uh, OU in the algebraic sense, you consider, of, you consider the shift of, uh, say, meromorphic functions uh, on X with poles along the divisor D, the normal crossing divisor. And this, uh, this uh, object, which is in fact uh, an uh, O module, but also a D module, namely you can differentiate the functions and uh, stay in the same sheaf. This object is in fact filtered by a filtration, which is called the filtration by the order of the pole. So this filtration is a, is a decreasing filtration uh, which was introduced by De Ligne uh, uh, in his uh, work on, on uh, differential equations. This filtration is defined by the fact that, uh, in fact, it is uh, zero in positive degrees. And in, in, in degree zero, you, you, it is generated by, uh, by the locally by the generator one over the equation of D. And uh, in higher degrees, or in smaller degrees, negative degrees, you obtain the filtration by uh, differentiating the degree zero term as uh, much as authorized by the degree of the filtration. Okay? So this gives a filtration, and when, whenever you have such a, a module, a D module with a filtration, you can filter in a natural way its Durham complex. So you have a filtered complex, the Durham complex filtered uh, in the way I have, ex I have explained here. And uh, the, the theorem of the line uh, tells us that uh, if you consider the, the filtered complex and its cohomology, then the, you will define the Hodge filtration on the uh, sorry, this is an X. This should be an X here. The hypercomology of X and the RAM of OX, which is indeed the cohomology of U, you will filter by taking the image filtration. And uh, what is important in this uh, result also is that this, this arrow here, this 
uh, arrow from the subcomplex into the complex in the cohomology uh, setting that is injective, which means that uh, the it degenerates at E1. Sorry. Are we getting HKV from a subset? Hmm? Is that just a shift cohomology? Oh, this is X. This is X. I, I made a mistake. This is X. This is a, a complex on X. So, sorry, this is. Okay, but this, uh, this complex of meromorphic forms uh, or is not so easy to work with. So there is a subcomplex which is much uh, easier to understand. Is the complex also there are x instead of uh, everywhere? There is the logarithmic complex, and uh, this logarithmic complex is in fact quasi-isomorphic to the uh, the arm complex of uh, meromorphic forms. And then you can uh, compute uh, the cohomology with this complex whose sheaves are, in fact, uh, locally free sheaves of finite rank over OX. And also the filtration that you induce uh, from this one to, to the logarithmic complex is very easy. It is the this filtration here is just the stupid filtration by truncation of the complex and nothing more. So you have a, uh, also a degeneration for the same reason. The, the subcomplex here is also quasi isomorphic to the filter, uh, filtered uh, subcomplex here, and you have an injection. And so everywhere you put an X here. So and uh, the, the point is that uh, you can, uh, as we have seen uh, uh, on, on Monday, you can express this by saying that the, the hypercomology of the complex with the usual differential D is the same as the cohomology of the complex but with a zero differential. This is the E1 degeneration in that case. So the degeneration here is easier to understand in some sense. Okay, so let me uh, restate this uh, result in a, a different way, I mean a slightly different way. Uh, so uh, let us uh, degenerate really in some, in the, you have an E1 degeneration, but now I will degenerate the differential, the differential from D to zero. So I put a parameter U in front of D and make a bundle on uh, some, the affine line with coordinate U. I make a bundle, bundle because of the E1 degeneration, all the dimensions of the fibers are the same. Uh, I, I make a bundle with, by considering this complex where now U is a variable. And you can glue it uh, trivially uh, on P1, so by considering the V equals the inverse coordinate inverse of U. You can glue it as a bundle on P1. Okay? And in fact, the, the gluing of the complexes, because you have UD on, some, on one side and D on the other side, you just at the level L of the complex, you just multiply by u to the minus l. u is and v and, and u are related by this relation here. So you produce like this a bundle and in fact, as you see, uh, this uh, isomorphism is compatible with truncation. So you can do the same thing for the truncated bund uh, complexes and the, in that way you get a filtered bundle. So we get a bundle uh, plus a, a filtration on it. And if you look at the meaning of the E1 degeneration, it means exactly that this bundle uh, has a given uh, birkhoff grothendieck decomposition. And this birkhoff grothendieck decomposition is uh, given by uh, the powers at the peak 
term is HPQ, Q being equal to K, the index here of the cohomology, K minus P. Okay? So we have uh, this, uh, uh, this is exactly a, con a trivial consequence of the E1 degeneration for this construction. And in fact, this implies that our filtration that we, we got from the truncation, the stupid truncation of the ligne, is now the harder Narasimhan filtration of this bundle. Okay, yes? Is, is this bundle holomorphic on Q1? Yes, it is holomorphic. Yes, I mean, I, I've glued two locally free bundles, one in the chart with coordinate U and one in the chart with coordinate V, okay? And the gluing uh, uh, on, on the, the intersection is given by this isomorphism. It's algebraic, okay? Okay, so this is the, another way of looking at the linear uh, theorem. And here we have another we, we have another piece of data, namely a connection on this bundle. So this bundle is not only a filtered bundle, but it al also has a connection. You can act by the derivation in one chart you, de you differentiate with respect to V. And in the other chart, you differentiate, say, on each term. The, so here there was a, an L also. You, you differentiate with respect to u, uh, uh, partial u, minus l, in, in order to take into account this, uh, this um, isomorphism. And this glues as a connection on the bundle. You just check that these actions uh, commute with differentials. And so we, we, we get a connection which has a pole uh, because of this u du here, we have a pole of order 1 at u equals 0. So here we have an action of the Euler vector field. But at v equals 0, there is no pole. I mean, we just have a, a usual derivation. And you check that this is compatible with truncation because, in fact, it, it acts on each, at each level of the complex. And so the hardware Narasimhan filtration is stable by the connection, so it is flat. But the connection has a pole at infinity, at u equals zero. Okay? So we, are, we have a, such a, a very simple situation in that case. Okay, now, instead of considering a, just a, a variety, a smooth variety, I will consider a function, a regular function on this variety. So this, uh, this is, uh, of course, motivated by various questions that I will explain in a moment. And the question which uh, occurs here is, can we define a kind of Hodge filtration on this uh, twisted Durham cohomology that we have already seen? Can we define a kind of Hodge filtration and what kind of properties can we expect uh, for this filtration? So there are various motivations for this question. One, uh, the, the, I mean the original one due to the line uh, in 1984 uh, came from arithmetics. Uh, there is a, a theorem by Katz and Mazur uh, for varieties, not for functions, uh, giving a, a bound for Newton uh, polygons of, for uh, the coefficients uh, associated to zeta functions of varieties in terms of Hodge uh, numbers in characteristic P. And uh, Adolfson and Sperber uh, consider the same uh, problem, but for uh, L functions attached to Gauss sums uh, for some polynomials, some Laurent polynomials. So you have, uh, so the, the idea is to, to produce a kind of Hodge polygon which uh, would bound from below 
uh, say, some arithmetic data of a given uh, function defined over z, say. The more recent motivation came uh, from mirror symmetry for Fano manifolds or obifolds. And uh, I will explain this in a moment. And the third uh, motivation is to, uh, is to say, extract in the big category of uh, introduced by Moshizuki of twistor D modules, mixed twistor D modules, is, is to extract some twistor D modules which are, say, uh, geometric or have some geometric origin and to understand the Hodge theory they have. So let me start by the motivation concerning mirror symmetry. So in mirror symmetry, we, if we have a Fano manifold, or maybe with a symplectic structure, we expect that uh, the mirror object will be uh, some function, uh, lambda Ginzburg um, potential on some uh, variety u with some properties and in this correspondence uh, there are various ways to establish a, a correspondence but in this correspondence at least the cohomology of y should be uh, identified with the, the twisted cohomology of the landau ginzburg potential so a natural question is uh, is there any filtration that you can construct for the landau ginzburg potential, which would correspond to the Hodge filtration of your projective Fano variety. And so you, you expect a kind of a filtration, <coughs> I mean, interesting filtration on this twisted RAM cohomology. <coughs> the problem is to, is to understand what kind of properties this filtration would have. Uh, there is a problem here because in this correspondence uh, between the, in this mirror correspondence, you cannot expect that, the, for instance, the Q structure would coincide. Even the real structure would, would coincide, uh, would correspond. Uh, I mean, uh, there are examples for that. I mean, this is uh, understood in many cases and so uh, one cannot expect uh, that the filtration we will produce has some properties with respect to its conjugate. So as usual in Hodge theory, the Hodge filtration is opposite up to some shift uh, with its conjugate. So you have the HPQ decomposition. Now here uh, you cannot expect that uh, I mean, you, you, you would not expect because, uh, I mean, the, the, the conjugation do not correspond. Okay, so the question uh, that remains is if you find a filtration, what kind of properties can you expect? Not to be split not to be split. Uh, but in some sense, you, you will see that we, we understand the graded object. Okay? But we don't have uh, some... We don't, I don't know if there is any splitting. And in fact, uh, the line already observed that you should not expect any, the splitting having a nice say, properties in families, for instance. So you can... You, De Ligne gave an explicit example in his first computations of such a filtration where uh, he, he produced a family and he showed that in this family, certainly at some point, you will not have a splitting with respect to the, the conjugation, okay? So in some sense, De Ligne already observed the, this problem between the filtration and the real structure. This is a family of actual manifolds or of open manifolds? No, no, the, the, fam the family is the family of functions. The, the, the manifold was only, uh, say, an open set in, uh, in P1, okay? 
but you vary the function. Okay, so uh, the motivation for Delin, I mean, well, Delin observed many things, and in particular, uh, and gave examples of a construction of such a filtration, but in particular, it's interesting to, to, to see how he, he, he saw some phenomena that we, we now understand maybe better. Uh, if you consider the, on the affine line, uh, which is your variety now, u, you, you consider the, the squared function, square of the coordinate, then uh, the twisted Durham cohomology has dimension one. This is an easy computation, algebraic computation. And you know, you all know the, the period. On, on, so the, the real line now, which is a uh, Boyle-Moore class, uh, homology class, uh, loc uh, locally closed, cl uh, closed uh, cycle. This defines, in some sense, the the real structure. Uh, this class does gives you the the sorry the Q structure or Z structure even on this cohomology. Okay, so this generator, I mean, in the topological sense, gives you the the true uh, Q structure. But you see that the period is pi to the power one half. And uh, the line uh, knows that uh, usually you find uh, powers of two pi i when you consider Hodge theory weights and so on. You have the take twist uh, two pi i. So here you remark that you have a half, uh, uh, the power of pi is uh, one half. And so you will expect that in such an example, uh, the, if you have a Hodge filtration, the, the exponents would be uh, rational numbers. In fact, one half plus something. One. In the previous step, you said that you wrote that there's no basic structure corresponding to regular filtration. No, I mean, I said that the, the irregular filtra filtration and the Betty structure do not behave in the same way as in standard Hodge theory. So that's. I did not say that there is no Betty structure. There is one. Uh, okay, so uh, so I said something about the, the conjugation here. So you see, new phenomenon is that the, the, the exponents in the exponents in this filtration should be may, could be rational. We can understand that this from mir the mirror symmetry point of view, because. Uh, we could expect that the, some polynomials, some lambda Ginsburg polynomials, will be mirror of some uh, Fano orbifold, not manifold. And Fano orbifolds have uh, cohomologies with uh, rational exponents, rational uh, exponents. So uh, the, Hodge, uh, the Hodge decomposition also has rational exponents. So, Okay, and also I, I, I explained this uh, question of uh, bounding the, uh, the polygon made with, uh, from L functions. Okay, so another, another uh, motivation consists of uh, going much further in the theory of irregular D modules. So this is say, related to the wild Hodge theory uh, of Moshizuki. So let me explain a little bit. Uh, the same situation, U is an open set in X. The complement is a divisor. I don't need to have a divisor with normal crossings for the moment. And I consider a, a regular DX module, uh, which is nothing but a, an OX module, not of, fa of finite type. Uh, with a flat connection, which is, has some regular, regular uh, properties, regular singularities. So an example is uh, the sheaf of uh, meromorphic functions with its standard connection, standard differential. Now, if you are given a function on you, you can produce a twist. So uh, a new module, which is the twist of the standard sheaf of meromorphic functions, 
by adding df to the differential. So I get a holonomic module, which I call e to the f in a say, obvious way, because d plus df is the adjunction of d by the exponential. And so you can twist any module, uh, uh, regular holonomic module, say, by uh, adding df to the differential and say uh, you, you need to, uh, to, twi to tensor with meromorphic functions. And this rem re remains a uh, holonomic module, but it, it has some uh, irregular singularities because df, df has a, may have a very high order pole. Okay? If f has a pole, uh, somewhere on the boundary D, then DF will have a very high order pole. Okay, so this is a kind of light irregular module. You just twist by E to the F. But you can produce a much uh, more complicated irregular holonomic module if now you take a proper map from X to Y and consider the push forward of this twisted uh, module. So M was regular, you just twist by an exponential, and then now you take push forward. And uh, if, the, if the push forward map pi, uh, if the, its fibers cut the fibers of F in a complicated way, so you have tangencies and so on, this will produce uh, very complicated irregular singularities on the push forward here. So then you enter really in the, you, you have objects which are really uh, and uh, strongly uh, irregular, uh, have irregular singularities. Okay, now the question is the following. If you start from a mixed Hodge module, so a mixed Hodge module is a, a regular holonomic module, it, uh, it is endowed with a Hodge filtration, and the question of the line in that setting was to endow, to define a filtration that I would call the irregular Hodge filtration on this uh, tensor, this is a not curly, E to the F. So how should we do uh, that uh, in a natural way? In such a way that we would like that the the cohomology spectral sequence, so we, we have a, a filtered complex, exactly as I said before, if you have a filtered module, D module, you, you, you obtain a filtered Durham complex, then you can consider its cohomology. If X is projective, smooth projective, you would like that, uh, say, the line uh, property of E1 degeneration uh, occurs. And even you would like that uh, not only for the map X to point, so taking hypercomology, but you would like to have such a property for any proper map. And then you see that things come uh, uh, more and more interesting because this proper direct image may be very, have uh, very strong uh, irregular singularities. However, the filtration you would get, you would get by uh, considering the direct image filtration gives you some kind of canonical filtration for these irregular modules, okay? So this is mainly the, the objective of uh, the theory. And in fact, the theorem is that this uh, indeed occurs, namely, uh, with this function uh, on u, uh, you take x uh, smooth such that the, the complement of u is a divisor. Then for any mixed Hodge module, you can produce uh, uh, irregular Hodge filtration, say, uh, some kind of filtra good filtration, which extends uh, on, on you extends the, the filtration you had already on you, so the usual Hodge filtration, the difference uh, occurs 
on the pole divisor of the function. Now, one property in Hodge theory is that any morphism of uh, Hodge structures, mixed Hodge structures, mixed Hodge modules is strict with respect to the filtration. Now, if you take a morphism between two modules and you tensor by the exponential, you get a new morphism between the twisted modules and, in fact, it is strict with respect to this irregular filtration. The hard point, the hard point is that if you take any uh, projective morphism here, then you have this degeneration at E1 of the spectral sequence. Okay? So this is hard because you really enter the realm of irregular D modules in a very strong sense. And uh, a uh, um, uh, simpler particular case of this third point is that if your function f you start with is in fact composed uh, by, uh, from a function h on y composed with pi, okay, if it is composed with pi, then uh, you can build two, two filtrations on the push forward one is a push-forward filtration starting from what happens on X. And the second one is by considering the push-forward of the mixed Hodge module, which uh, has a filtration, and then take the construction given there. Okay? Hmm? I thought the module ECS would be supported on the crystal load and back. No, 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 no. It's a... It's uh, I, I, I have said that E to the F is the, it's not at all supported. Uh, it is written here. The shift, the underlying shift is meromorphic functions. Okay? You just twist the differential. Okay? It's not, I mean, uh, no, no, it's not supported on, on, on the pole locus. Mm -hmm. If this has a mixed Hodge structure, is it the case that uh, you can do the same? Yes, it is. It's a more general case because in the case of tensor with the tensor, actually, if you re modify the. So, uh, if you start with a mixed Hodge, if you start with a Hodge module on U, mixed Hodge module on U, okay, you can extend in the mixed Hodge sense of Saito. You get a mixed Hodge module on uh, X. Okay? This is uh, the M I am considering. Okay? But now you can modify it by twisting by DF. Okay? Of course, this modification only uh, occurs along the divisor. Okay? Nothing occurs on U because E to the F at least anal analytically, is a, an isomorphism on U. Okay? It's a just an holomorphic function on U, so no problem. Okay? So there is no th you do not mainly nothing on U when you do that. Okay? So that's why the first property I gave uh, here is that y you, you want to be sure that you did nothing on U. On U, everything is the same, but analytically. Algebraically, you have twisted the connection and you have added DF to the connection. So then the filtration itself has to be changed in order to, to have some degeneration property. It's not, uh, I do not, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I do not speak first of a vector bundle, I mean, I, I speak of uh, D modules first, 
and uh, I do not modify, I mean, I, first you, you can say that if, for instance, D has normal crossing, you take the Delin extension, okay? Delin meromorphic right. extension, okay? Normal. This gives you. So uh, you start with such an object, okay? This is a mixed Hodge model, okay? The point in mixed Hodge theory is to explain how you would extend the filtration, okay? That's the, the big point. But assume you start with an object which is extended, so by the linear extension from U to X, and also with the filtration, Hodge filtration and standard Hodge theory by Saito. Okay, this is an object which you are given. But now you, 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 you want to do the same thing by changing the connection and on U by adding DF. Then you cannot, if you want the degeneration at the end, you cannot extend the filtration in the same way. Okay, so you have to, this is the irregular Hodge filtration. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, say some words on the, on the proof. So, as I said, uh, Deligne uh, started the, this question uh, in 1984. Uh, and, I mean, uh, I already said what is written. Uh, and uh, he, of course, was aware that anybody could ask what can you do with a filtration if you do not have the oppositeness condition, okay? And uh, so he, he explained that exactly what I said, that this could be useful for, uh, say, uh, generalizations of the Katz and Mazur theorem to, to functions. <coughs> Uh, in 2010, I, I, I knew some things about twist or D modules, and then I tried to, to look back at the Deligne uh, paper, and, uh, in, in, and uh, then I was able to extend his, his uh, construction in case of uh, where you start with a pure Hodge module on, a, on a, an open set on P1, and the function is just identity, but you have a divisor and the module is uh, complicated. So this uses uh, ideas of twist or D modules uh, and uh, also some uh, results of Saito on brisk on lattices that I will uh, explain in a, in a moment. Then a uh, few years after, uh, Zheng Daoyu was uh, also interested in a question, maybe a suggestion of uh, Hélène Henault, and uh, he defined the filtration now not in the general case of a, of a mixed surge module, but in the case uh, as considered by the linear, uh, a function uh, on an open set. Uh, and he defines a filtration that I will call uh, FU. Uh, and he could prove uh, various cases of uh, degenerations. So in some examples but not in general, unfortunately. And at the same time, in fact, uh, Konsevich was motivated by uh, these uh, mirror symmetry questions, and he introduced uh, the, the analog of the logarithmic complex that I will explain in a moment, which is called omega dot f, and uh, he remarked that this omega dot f uh, can be endowed with uh, many uh, connections, not only D or D plus DF, but in fact the whole set of linear combinations of them. And he, he gave a proof by using a characteristic P method of like uh, the Illusi method. He gave a proof that uh, for each of these differentials you have degeneration at E1 for the stupid filtration. Okay, so the really the analog of uh, the logarithmic case of the linear. And then in uh, 2013, with uh, Hélène Eno and uh, Zheng Daoyu, we could, uh, uh, we could give a, a general statement for uh, the filtration introduced by Zheng Daoyu before. And we made the relation with the logarithmic complex of uh, Konsevich. And Konsevich could prove the things using characteristic P methods only by using uh, 
by assuming that the pole divisor is uh, reduced. And this method uh, gave a general proof without this reduced as, uh, assumption. And also Moriko Saito, it is not written here, but gave uh, another proof in some cases, at least for the, the degeneration for D, not the whole family, but for D. Okay. And then recently with uh, Zheng Daoyu, we could prove the general theorem which uh, was written here, in particular this one. This part is the new difficult part and this really uses uh, the theory of mixed twist or D modules. Okay, so now this was for the analog of the original Deligne statement. So what about the next part, I mean the bundle part? So uh, this was the idea of uh, Konsevich. So as I said, uh, let me explain this uh, logarithmic complex uh, in the case of a function. So now I assume that f uh, as usual when we consider logarithmic complexes, f is a function on a complement of a normal crossing divisor on x. And inside of the logarithmic complex, the usual logarithmic complex of forms to, uh, at each level k, you can consider a sub uh, sheaf omega k, f, sub f, consisting of those forms of which are logarithmic, but so that the, the, the wedge with df remains logarithmic. So uh, recall that df has a high order pole uh, <coughs> near its polar divisor. So this is a, a strong uh, condition. Okay? But uh, in fact, these sheaves uh, do exist and you have, uh, of course, the, the only problem difference between the logarithmic complex and these sheaves occurs along the pole divisor and the, 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 they are nice locally free sheaves except of the fact that they are not equal to the logarithmic forms. Okay? You can express locally, I mean there is a very simple uh, way of expressing these subsheaves, noticing that if df has a bigger other pole, df over f is always logarithmic. Okay? So, we, and then we get, uh, uh, we get uh, you remark that this uh, complex, you have an action of the differential df, which makes it as a complex on omega f, but also d. d also is a differential, and you can make, you can produce a whole set of differ different uh, connections uh, for this complex. Now, uh, one can refine a little bit the construction if by taking into account the multiplicities of the pole divisor uh, when the pole divisor P has some multiplicities E sub I. Then, uh, given any uh, real or rational numbers between 0 and 1, you can consider the integral part alpha P, uh, which consists in considering the integral part of the multiplicities and define a sub uh, omega k, sorry, the, the missing a k, omega k of alpha as a subsheaf of the logarithmic forms where you allow, moreover, a pole of order alpha p at most along p. Okay, so this means that you allow uh, more than logarithmic poles, but in a very uh, constraint way. And then instead of considering the logarithmic forms, you consider these forms and with the same definition with the alpha p here, you get a, a sub sheaf which takes into account the alpha. And we get a complex. And the theorem of uh, Konsevich uh, is exactly similar to the theorem of the line in that setting namely for every alpha and uh, every pair of complex numbers, namely for any differential, 
you have degeneration at E1 for the truncated, stupid truncation filtration. Okay, so Konsevich, as I said, proved it when the, the pole order, the pole is reduced, the pole divisor is reduced, and as I said, we, we could prove it in, in general. So this is the, uh, this was the, the things I explained last year uh, here. But now let's continue with the bundle construction. So what happens now with the bundle construction? So the, the bundle construction can be done exactly in the same way with this modified logarit logarithmic complex, okay? So you can, uh, exactly as I did before, you can produce bundles on each chart now, but there is a difference now because in the V chart, the DF appears here, okay? So it has, it is not zero as before. So it's not trivial in the V chart. And we get a filtered bundle, okay? So the, the isomorphisms are exactly the same as before for gluing. And we get a filtered bundle and we can express this uh, theorem of Konsevich, which is here, this degeneration theorem, exactly as uh, for the Deligne uh, situation, namely that this bundle, K alpha upper K, uh, decomposes uh, in a birkhoff grothendieck decomposition, and these uh, numbers, HP, K minus P alpha of F, are kind of uh, Hodge numbers, and uh, in some sense, uh, the, what says the, the theorem is that the, the twisted Durham cohomology, so answering your question, the twisted Durham cohomology of U maybe does not decompose as a direct sum of objects uh, like this in a canonical way, but at least in a non-canonical way, uh, you have a direct sum decomposition exactly as in the cl classical case. And also the filtration we, we constructed like this is the ardern arasiman filtration. And, uh, but now uh, the question which is not uh, obvious is how to put a connection on this bundle. Okay. So there is no way, easy way to put a connection because of the term D, DF in the definition. So something has to be done uh, it's not so easy as in the Lin case. So the case of the Lin is the case where F is constant, okay? So in this theorem, if you say F is constant, which is allowed, then you recover, of course, exactly uh, the theorem of the Lin. Okay. So the theorem I would like to explain a little bit is the following, which was suggested. This theorem was uh, suggested by Konsevich, is that, in fact, there is a natural uh, connection, neuromorphic connection, on this bundle K for any alpha. The connection will have a pole uh, of order 1, a logarithmic pole at V equals 0, and a pole of order less than 2, at, at most 2, at U equals 0. So if you remember, in the case of a constant function, so the Lin case, there was no pole at V equals zero and a pole of order one at uh, U equals zero, okay? So there is no other pole. We added one at V equals zero, add one uh, order one, um, uh, one to the order at U equals zero, and, but there are no other pole for this connection. Now, the filtration will satisfy not uh, the flatness as in the case of the Lin, but the Griffith's transversality here. So there is a shift by minus one, as in variations of host structures. And uh, the residue of the logarithmic connection at V equals zero, in fact, has eigenvalues in this interval determined by alpha. So the alpha now comes in uh, here 
by uh, modifying the place where the residue has eigenvalues. Okay? So this bundle is what is called the Dulin extension determined by alpha or minus alpha. Okay? It's Dulin's canonical extension at v equals zero. And moreover, as in Hodge theory, when you look at limiting uh, Hodge structures, the nilpotent part of the residue at v equals zero is a, is a map uh, on, the, on the graded spaces uh, because of uh, Griffith's uh, transversality. There is a shift by minus one, but this map is strict with respect to the filtration, okay? Like in Hodge theory. Okay, so I will end uh, how, how long do, we ha do I have still? The ten, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. So I would like to explain some words about the, the proof of this theorem. Okay, so the point is to, to uh, put a connection on this bundle is to give an interpretation of this bundle as a Gauss-Mannin bundle or as a bundle in a Gauss-Mannin uh, system. Okay. So I will explain how one constructs the Gauss-Mannin system. So we start with the map now F regarded as a map from X to P1. Okay. And uh, uh, of course it was uh, regular on U, so the image of U is contained in A1. Now, instead of considering the map F, I will consider the map V times F. So V now is a new variable, the variable I am interested in. And I am considering the map V times F or new times A1. Uh, so what I am doing is, uh, is that I am rescaling the function F. So instead of considering just F, I rescale it by any complex number, V. And now I regard this as a map on the product, uh, uh, a not well-defined map everywhere, on the product X cross P1. This map uh, is only defined a priori on the, on U, is regular on U cross A1. And there is a new pole uh, divisor here, which is the old pole divisor P times P1. And there is a new, uh, <coughs> divisor here where u equals zero, v equals infinity, uh, in uh, time x times infinity. Okay? So we have a new curly p uh, pole divisor for this map. And now the, the, the complete divisor d which we are interested in is the union of this pole divisor and the remaining part, h is the remaining part, uh, so d, the original d was p, Union H, H is to say the horizontal divisor. Okay? So H is an, an extra part, but the really important part in the divisor D is the P, the pole. And now I will consider the projection. So now everything is on X cross P1. And the, so this P1 is the P1 of the variable V and U. Okay, so you have two charts and you have the variable V and variable U. And so I will consider the projection from X cross P1 to P1. Now, on this uh, X cross P1, I have a holonomic module, which is uh, the E to the V times F. Okay, so uh, why I want to consider this module? Because you, re you see that d of vf is v is constant is v times df. It is our connection here. But of course you remark that this is like a Laplace kernel. Okay? So my aim is to consider the push forward of this holonomic module on x cross p1 here, push forward to P1. Then we will get uh, various, for any k, we will get various uh, holonomic modules on P1, uh, which are the Gauss-Mannin 
systems with respect to this push forward of this E, curly E. And because uh, our curly E contained a fiber in its, in its pole divisor, this push forward is uh, equal to its localization along uh, infinity in P1. So it's uh, equivalent to consider this Gauss-Mannin system or only the, its part on the V uh, chart. So uh, as a module on the Weyl algebra on the V coordinate. Okay. So uh, this object by definition has a connection. It is a Gauss-Mannin connection. Okay. Now the, the proposition here is that this, uh, this uh, holonomic D module has two singularities only, one at V equals zero, which is a regular singularity, and one at U equals zero, which may be irregular. Okay? And the reason is uh, very simple. The reason that, in fact, this H, that, uh, this uh, HK that I have constructed here by a push forward, you can, it's a push forward of, a, of this module, but you can make first a push forward with respect to x cross a to by f and then make a Laplace transform. Okay. So uh, this module, in fact, is the Laplace transform of the usual Gauss-Mannin system for f. Okay. So the usual Gauss-Mannin system for f is a regular holonomic module on the affine line. And its Laplace transform is then, uh, by uh, standard results, known to have the properties uh, given above. Okay, so we are really working with the Laplace transform of a usual regular holonomic module and even a usual mixed Hodge module. So we know, moreover, that this is the Laplace transform of some mixed Hodge module. Okay. So as a consequence of this proposition, you can see uh, more simply the module when you uh, work on uh, the complement of V equals zero. So on GM, uh, so the, you consider the ring of Laurent polynomials in V, and when you tensor with this ring, what you get is in fact just a free module over this Laurent polynomial ring of finite rank, and a connection, so a meromorphic connection with the two singularities, one at v equals zero, which is regular, and one at v equal infinity, which may be irregular. And so uh, at the regular singularity, you have the usual de ligne extension uh, uh, with respect to the, the, the residue, and uh, this is, a, or say, Kashiwara Malgrange. Uh, definition of the de ligne extension, and we get a, a free module over uh, this uh, ring of polynomials in V. This will be our extension as a bundle on the chart U. It, it remains to, uh, to extend to fi find a bundle on P1, so what happens in the chart with coordinate U uh, then the construction, uh, I will not explain but it, but the construction uses now the Hodge filtration. So up to now, I did not use the Hodge filtration of uh, the original mixed Hodge module. So here we have a mixed Hodge module. It has a Hodge filtration, the, the filtration by the pole order. And it is used to construct a new uh, module uh, over the ring polynomial ring C of U, and with respect to this uh, uh, construction, the connection as a pole of order 2. So this is typically what you find in non-commutative Hodge structures. Yeah. So then you can glue both things and get a bundle H alpha K. So here is the, the, the linear extension. Here is a Briscoe lattice. And you have a logarithmic pole 
on one side and a pole of order 2 on the other side. And the point is that our Konsevich bundle, in fact, for the value alpha, in fact, is identified, can be identified with this uh, bundle in the, in the Gauss-Mann system. Okay? So whenever we have that, uh, we are sure that the other Narasimhan filtrations do coincide. Okay, the bundles are isomorphic, so the, the isomorphins preserve the Arden Arasiman filtration. So the last question is how to relate the Arden Arasiman filtration to something, uh, to, this, uh, to some Hodge properties. So now I come back to the HK, so the Gauss-Mannin system. You remember that it was a push forward of our uh, exponential Vf. But this exponential Vf has a, an irregular Hodge filtration by the first part of the talk. So you can push uh, this uh, irregular Hodge filtration and uh, so the, uh, there is an alpha coming in the irregular Hodge filtration. <coughs> uh, I mean you can vary alpha a and then uh, the point is that uh, this irregular Hodge filtration uh, induces exactly the other Narasimhan filtration on our bundle H alpha K. And then by the properties of the irregular Hodge filtration, you recover the properties uh, one wanted for the uh, other Narasimhan filtration for, with respect to the connection. So this other Narasimhan filtration, in fact, in that case, is nothing but the the trace on the bundle of the irregular Hodge filtration. Okay, so maybe I stop. I stop.